Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am Arif, your Cloud Learning Journey partner. Well, uh, today we're gonna cover a very cool topic that is uh, AWS Elastic Beanstalk. Well, before starting our video, I want to talk about my uh, background. So I do have more than eight years of experience in cloud computing, and specifically AWS, Google Cloud, and Microsoft Azure. Beside that, I have vast experience in uh, cybersecurity. Currently, I'm holding CISS CCSP certification. Beside that, uh, if we are talking about AWS, then uh, currently I'm holding more than five AWS certification. If you can see my certification from my background all right so uh before starting the video i want to talk about why we need to use aws elastic beanstalk suppose you have an application existing application that you want to run on aws but now the problem is that you are new in aws uh, platform so you're not that well uh aware of AWS uh, services like the server, load balancing, the monitoring, the security because whenever you host an application in AWS, you need to configure everything. So for that reason, AWS came up with a very cool product that is Elastic Beanstalk. So uh, you are just defining your environment and AWS is taking care, uh, care of the, all the backend that is related to your application. It makes your life way, way simpler. So without further delay, let's get started. I have logged into my AWS account and from the search menu, I'm going to look for Elastic Beanstalk. Okay, so this is the service that uh, we will go through today. So uh, just uh, looking into the description, you can see that it uh, helps us to run multiple uh, uh, programming language application. So. Uh, Let's uh, first create uh, application using Elastic Beanstalk. It will be easier to explain in that way. Okay, so when I click there, the first page that I come up is the environment here. So AWS Elastic Beanstalk, uh, Beanstalk has two types of environment here, so some different type of web applications. The first one is that web server environment. Uh, web server, we can uh, uh, refer um, the Amazon as a web server because uh, uh, we are uh, every time we are typing amazon.com it's uh, taking us to a website that is uh, accessible from uh, everywhere from everyone so we can call it amazon.com as a web server so if we have a web application like that we can uh, choose this option the second option is the worker environment so if we read the description it says like run a worker application that process long running workload on demand or perform task on a schedule so if you need some similar like this then you can go for this option so uh, for the application name we are gonna call it test just uh, for the sake of this video and uh, if we want to add any application tags we can add it from here just uh, add new tag option in here so what is tag? Well, we can call tags as a labels of an application. Suppose uh, you are working in a very big company and uh, they have multiple application and you have deployed those application using Elastic Beanstalk and uh, uh, it's uh, very hard to actually remember all the application functionality by name because uh, when you are dealing with uh, thousands, it's very easy to forget uh, the names. So what you can do, you can add tags. It will be easier for us to actually remember how why and what the reason we have deployed this application for the this video we don't need any tags because we are just dealing with only one application perfect the uh, next option is environment information so here environment information first we need to declare our environment name so automatically it is uh, uh, using the name test env according to our application name okay after declaring the environment name the next option is to uh, define the domain name so uh, if you are okay with the default auto generated value then you can just keep it blank or if you have any specific name in your mind you can put in here but here uh, the end is us 
hyphenist1.elasticminster.com. So this is uh, the parent domain. The good part is that uh, AWS Elastic Beanstalk can be integrated easily with uh, AWS Route 53. So uh, Route 53 is a domain name service. So if you are not familiar with Route 53, I have created a video uh, earlier related to Route 53 where I have explained very briefly about all the functions of Route 53. If you want to learn more, please uh, visit that video. Uh, so once we have this, we can integrate with our main domain name using the Route 53. And if we want to add some description uh, about the environment, we can add it in here. The platform, the next uh, section is platform. So we do have two options in here. One is managed platform, platform published and maintained by AWS uh, Elastic Beanstalk. So this is, uh, this is what we want and for that, uh, the platform we have to choose a platform in here so if uh, your application is running uh, running on uh, node.js uh, then you can choose node.js or java the good part is that you can also choose docker so it comes with a lot of variation that's a very cool part so let's choose uh, php um, let's assume our application is uh, built on php now uh, here it will suggest the platform branch so uh, we have to choose one according to our requirement but it's always good to go with the latest one and then the platform version so there's only one so we'll just go with this so everything is pretty automated so far you can see then the application code this is a, a good one so for the application code uh, suppose uh, you were new in uh, AWS environment before deploying your main application you are want to you want to see how this works so you want to try with the sample application then you can use this one or you have your existing code and you just want to uh, deploy it then you can go for this option if you go with this second option upload your code here we have to label our version and uh, here source code origin maximum size 2 GB so our source code origin could, uh, can't be more than 2 GB in size uh, we do have two options in here we can uh, upload uh, files from our local machine or we can upload files to uh, S3 bucket first and from the S3 bucket we can share the uh, path from the S3 URL so it's uh, up to us which option we prefer uh, for the sake of video, uh, I will just go with the sample application option. Then uh, here we have to uh, select the configuration preset. So single instance free tier eligible or we want if we want to use a single instance but using spot instances we can choose from here. So uh, a good question could be what is a spot instance in AWS? Well, we know AWS is a pool big pool of resources right all the compute everything is inside a pool whenever a customer requests for a, a server or something like that then we uh, get some resources from the pool on on demand basis right so most of the time all the resources that aws has, has all the compute powers that AWS has is not uh, fully utilized so what it will does that the unutilized uh, uh, compute powers are rent uh, in, in a cheap price so the main difference between uh, spot instance and regular instance is that in spot instance uh, we don't have the certainty that our server will be always up for us so if someone else is requesting for a compute power and they are requesting by in demand basis like a regular price basis then aws will take our compute uh, power and uh, provide it to the uh, regular customer regular tier so it will give us a very short window so it is not a very sustained compute uh, power environment for the sake of this video we're gonna go with the uh, uh, single instance because it's uh, we will have the free tier eligibility now uh, it is uh, asking us for service access a service role we have to define that create and use new service role or use an existing service role. I don't have any existing service role, so that's why I'm gonna go with this option. And uh, it will create a policy or permission for us. 
so if we click in here view permission details here we can see what kind of permission is uh, uh, attaching with the resource so it's a JSON policy so I will cover uh, this JSON policies like how we can write J uh, IAM uh, rules and policy using JSON in uh, one of my videos so um, uh, for this video let's assume that this uh, policy or permission is created by AWS for us to make our life easy and if we want to uh, log into our EC2 servers, so uh, the uh, good question could be like, uh, when AWS is managing everything, are we still using EC2 server? And the answer is yes, hundred percent. So without a EC2 server, we can't run our application, right? But the good thing is that this EC2 server is managed by AWS. But if any point we want to uh, SSH into the servers that are hosting our application, we can do that by using EC2 key pair. So if we uh, create an EC2 key pair in here and attached with this uh, setup, then we can use the EC2 key pair to uh, SSH into our server. In this video, we are gonna skip this part because we are not planning to SSH into our EC2 server. Uh, Let's click next. In this uh, section, AWS is recommending to uh, deploy the application inside a custom VPC instead of the default VPC. Because uh, if we want to make any adjustment and changes to our route table or the way we want to access our application, if we change the uh, subnets, uh, it won't affect the other default applications. So this is a bit a best practice, but uh, uh, as we are just creating a tutorial, a, vi um, a video, so for that reason, I won't uh, create VPC from scratch and uh, declare that for our uh, environment. Well, if you are uh, curious about learning VPC, like how to deploy a VPC from scratch, I have uh, created a video on this uh, previously. Please visit that video. I'm gonna add the video link under the video description. So for this video, I'm gonna go with this default one. Okay, and uh, it's asking whether uh, I want to assign a public IP address to the AC2 instance in your environment. Well, uh, let's assign a public IP address because we'll assume this is a web server, okay? And the instance uh, subnet. So here we do have multiple instance subnet and it's always good to choose multiple uh, availability zones uh, because if one availability zone goes down, we can always uh, replicate the environment or the application in a different availability zone if we want to do even load balancing using that or our route 53 to route traffic in a different zone it is really helpful in that way so i'm gonna choose like two availability zone for this video and database integrates rds sql database with environment uh, for this uh, video we won't uh, use RDS SQL because it's uh, more of a tutorial and uh, as we're not using this uh, database we don't need to define or specify our database subnets and let's click next now the root volume so by default it is a container and if uh, we want to have we want any specific kind of like uh, volume type we can do, uh, choose it from these options and uh, i suggest always uh, go for general purpose one because general purpose one is uh, cheaper and the performance is always better if you go for provisioned iops it's uh, expensive because you're paying for the provisioned iops so uh, if you are dealing with a very simple application, uh, general purpose SSD is a good option. Okay, and then EC2 security group. Uh, we select a security group to control the traffic. So uh, we are gonna select the default one and capacity auto scaling we don't want to use auto scaling that's why 
uh, we chose a single instance and uh, we didn't uh, choose the load balanced one and fleet on demand instance uh, we don't want to use the spot instance because after finishing this tutorial i'm going to delete this uh, um, environment anyway so the uh, the ec2 instance type is uh, t3 micro and t3 small so this is an ami id that uh, aws uh, specified so we are not uh, making any changes in here let's uh, click next So health reporting, let's go for the basic because enhanced would uh, cost us some money and I don't want to pay extra. Then the manage platform updates. Uh, so here we can uh, define the update window. If uh, you know that uh, during weekend you will get uh, less traffic, then uh, you should choose uh, Saturday or Sunday as a managed window okay and we'll go with the default option for everything under this environment and let's go for the next name is elastic mission option name manage instance manage require enhanced reporting platform of this record enhanced so as it's more of managed that's why we need to have uh, enhanced monitoring we can't just go for the basic one okay so now we are gonna see an, a review i know it's a lot of configuration but uh, for the sake of video i try to keep it short and uh, precise just uh, we have chosen the default options and we can ignore this one because it's already fixed and now we're gonna click submit so at the back end everything is uh, being created here under the events you can see what kind of uh, action is taken care of by aws elastic beanstalk it takes some time to actually populate everything because i remember the back end it is creating the ec2 server it is creating uh, all the resources the monitoring and uh, uh, provisioning everything that we need there to provision uh, manually so it takes some time so this is the end of today's tutorial. Today we have covered Elastic Beanstalk. How can we create Elastic Beanstalk environments and stages using AWS console? If you have any questions or any sort of confusion related to AWS Elastic Beanstalk, feel free to let me know under this uh, comment section and I will definitely play back in a very short period of time. Uh, beside that, if you want me to cover any specific AWS service, Azure service, uh, anything related to the cloud security or cyber security, let me know. I will definitely cover for those topics uh, i really want to create a community where everybody will help each other to uh, become a better it professional if you found this video helpful please like and subscribe to my channel for watching my upcoming videos i'm planning to cover all aws services then i'll create another series related to certification where i'll cover aws azure google cloud Cybersecurity cloud security also certifications and uh, i just want to share my knowledge that i have learned in a hard way so that's all for today and have a great and wonderful day